Our passage for this morning is found in the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 2, but we'll begin in verse 1 to get into context here. It says, In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. A very interesting portion of scripture to be sure. There in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 2. But the two things that are there that are very important and that I want to focus on in this video is that the Lord is going to cut off the idols, the names of the idols, and the unclean spirit. And he's going to get that unclean spirit out of the land. Which tells you what? What are idols? They're unclean spirits. They are devils. The Bible talks about that in the New Testament. It refers to idols being devils. The things that the Gentiles sacrifice to idols, they sacrifice to devils. You know, and he says, I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Um, so all these different people, and they say, well, we have our religious beliefs that are different than Christianity. Uh, well, then you're worshiping devils. And uh, I have to say some controversial stuff here, but the fact of the matter is, I believe that this movement of the Lord cutting off the idols, quite frankly, I think it's starting. You say, how so? Well, um, the uh, fires down in Maui, um, I watched some of the news coverage of it, and you know, the people that were being interviewed, I didn't hear them say one thing about Jesus Christ, uh, unless they were using his name in profanity. Um, and that's not okay. Well, you know, you have your religion, we have ours. Well, but your religion is based on worshiping devils. Um, and I heard a lot of these native people down there, of uh, Ho the Hawaiian people, whatever, and they were saying about um, Pele, Madam Pele, and this, you know, spirit of this and the spirit of that, you know, and, uh, and whatever. And uh, the reality of it is they're, they're false idols there. Uh, their false idols didn't deliver them from that fire. And you say, well, it was, a, it was a military attack. It was di directed energy weapons or whatever else. Their gods didn't protect them. You know why? Because they're devils there. They're, they're not gods. They're not really, they are idols, but those idols are devils. Uh, the devils um, are now going to start being turned against the people. I firmly believe that. So, uh, and I heard, you know, I mean, maybe there was somebody down there that uh, professed to be saved or something. I don't know, but I didn't see any. I didn't watch all the coverage. I don't have time for that. But, um, but I heard some real foul-mouthed people and things, and they're swearing and using all kinds of profanity and the the F word, you know, real high class. And uh, they're all upset about what's happened down there and all the bad things that are going on with the government and how the government's treating them. Um, their false gods didn't deliver them. And uh, just yesterday, learned out about this pagan satanic festival, this Burning Man thing out in uh, uh, Nevada, I think it is, in Nevada desert. And these people go and it's just this completely sick, twisted thing of drugs and alcohol and perversion of all sorts. Uh, I can't even watch stuff like that. I, you know, I don't want to even see it. I don't want to fill my mind with such trash. And all of a sudden, there's flooding. Huge torrential rains. And uh, the people are told to shelter in place. Hmm. And they're told to conserve food and water. And it might be a little while before you can get out of there. So please conserve your food and water. And, and uh, there's some reports of Ebola breaking out. Huh. Now here's my theory on this whole thing. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, give me your thoughts on it. But uh, I think that these people are going to be part of a biochemical uh, warfare agent uh, operation. I think that they're being told to, quote, shelter in place, the term that was brought out during the scandemic. Uh, now you have to stay there. You have to um, 
you know, stay there, don't move. Kind of like, you know, some guy, I have to do this with my right hand because I'm right-handed. Um, but uh, some guy says, pulls his gun up and he says, don't move, don't move. Keep your hands in the air. Keep your hands in the air. Don't move. Why? Because he wants to shoot you. And it's a lot harder to uh, shoot a, a moving target than it is to shoot a stationary one. So you're told to shelter in place. Why? Uh, because it'll be easier to kill you that way. And these people down in Hawaii, down there in Maui, oh, we're going to uh, hold you in with blockades. We're going to put you in there. Um, if you haven't figured it out yet, uh, the elements within uh, government, and I, I use that term very loosely, but some of the elements within government, they want to kill people. Um, it's about the population. It's about uh, we need to lower the lower the birth rate and increase the death rate. They've been calling for that for a long time. Um, make people sterile, encourage uh, forms of sexual perversion that do not produce children, and then we want to increase the death rate through toxic additives and, and all the other things that they do, which you can't talk about anymore. Um, but uh, that's what I think is going on. This whole, I mean, shelter in place, you know. Oh, you, you can't leave because it's too muddy. Oh, well, that's never stopped people in the past. I mean, look at some of the old pictures or video reels of back during war, wars, World War II or whatever. They had to get out of an area. They got out of the area. You know, they were, you know, you'd see the, the trucks and things stuck in the mud and they're trying to pull things out and get things moved. You could make it happen. All right. Um, and a number of people, they walked away from the event. Uh, this wicked comedian guy, Chris Rock or whatever, I saw this thing that they said he walked five miles to get away from this whole thing. Had some people pick him up in a truck and take him to safety. Hey, he probably knows. He probably had some, maybe some insider knowledge or something and or started to just feel kind of a, uh-oh, I think I know what's going on here. <laughs> and, um had enough sense to get out of there, walk out, you know, I mean, just kind of find that funny, some celebrity, pampered little celebrity, and they walk out five miles to get away from the uh, death zone. So we'll have to see. I, don't, I have no idea. I haven't checked. You know, we left the office last night, um, probably about seven o'clock in the evening, and I haven't heard any updates or anything else. Maybe the people will get away, maybe everything will be fine, or maybe there will be huge amounts of death. But uh, the important thing to remember about the time of Jacob's trouble that's coming is that there aren't multiple religions that are in that time period. The whole world worships the beast, right? It's so important to remember that. And I did a study on that. Uh, and the study was that there is one religion to rule them all you know, you know about the lord of the rings thing there the one ring uh, well the ring i believe is symbolic of the bible but that's another issue but uh tolkien's whole purpose with the lord of the rings by the way was to talk about the rebirth of the holy roman empire that's what uh his whole concept was he was a fanatic roman catholic uh some people say member of the order of the golden dawn i don't know um he was definitely part of some occult stuff with his different uh, uh, guilds and things that he was part of. Um, but uh, what they want to do for the future, brethren, is they are going to create this Roman Catholic um, system. You know, sunlight hitting me in the face here this morning as it's coming up. They're... Um, they're going to come to power again. And all that you say, what about the ecumenical meetings though, Brother Brian? And they're bringing all religions together and they're saying we all worship the same God. That's a smoke screen. You know, the old saying goes, all roads lead to Rome. Well, let the people think that, hey, we're all on the same page. We're all, we respect you. Come on over here to the Vatican and whatever. Um, well, you know, again, you have to remember that the book of Revelation talks about Mystery Babylon and she's the, mother of uh, harlots she has a lot of daughters and uh, so 
those daughters can come home to their mother occasionally. But eventually the mother's going to say, okay, now you're all going to do it my way. And, um, but these, all these false idols, all the, you know, Buddha and Krishna and, and, uh, Muhammad and, and, you know, all these other things like that, uh, it's going to be destroyed in the future. And I personally believe that the covenant that is signed between the Jews and the Antichrist, uh, that's going to be a, an agreement between Roman Catholicism and, uh, and all their papal knights and the Masonic Jews. And that covenant that is confirmed with many for one week, the, uh, the big deal on that that they're going to do will be the destruction of the Islamic people which has been a historic target of the Roman Catholic Church with all their crusades. So, uh, Rome, ancient Rome, never went away. And you have to understand that. The fourth kingdom, the iron, two legs of the iron legions of Rome, the eastern and the western kingdoms there, um, that kingdom did not dissolve. It just became mixed with the ten toes, or the, it became the ten toes, part of iron part of miry clay so roman catholicism is the fifth kingdom and it's been around uh for centuries like that uh they are not some it's just a church brother brian it's just it's just some kind of a you know religious organization then why do the kings come and bow before the pope why is it that all the presidents and everybody else they have to come and meet with the pope and they get orders take orders from the pope you know Oh, well, they'll eventually become powerful sometime in the future. Uh, no, they're powerful right now. Um, and you're going to see more power coming out in the future. So, um, but I really do believe that the uh, Lord is going to start to cut off the idols and the false or the uh, unclean spirits out there. And I think he's going to start to reduce these false religions and uh, they're going to be all worshiping the dragon and the beast the dragon that gives power to the beast which is satan the whole world is going to be a satanic roman catholic system in the future and you know it's that's what the bible prophesies see and so i right now i'm giving you prophecy for the future a more sure word of prophecy because it's not my feelings it's what the bible says would happen and you can logically deduce this stuff and say, okay, um, do all the world leaders go and meet with uh, the head of Islam? If there is such a thing, some imam or whatever. No, they don't. Um, do all the uh, world leaders have to go and meet with the, the head of some Protestant church out there? The United Methodist uh, head or the head of the Lutheran church, Missouri Synod or something? No, they don't. Um, they go to, and they meet at the Vatican. The Vatican is the only church that has uh, their leader sitting on a throne. And that throne could eventually be given over to a man that appears to be Jesus Christ. A man that would come and take over the current anti-pope, as they call him, uh, Francis. Which is, you know, judging from the outside in, I'm not a Catholic. But if I was, I would definitely be calling Pope Francis the worst pope ever. Um... All the liberal stuff that he's doing and allowing and whatever else. That guy's terrible. I'm not even a Catholic. <laughs> so, if I was a Catholic, I'd be very upset about Francis. So, those are my thoughts. I'd like to hear what you think about that. Um, I really believe that uh, we're going to see more of this. And um, to conclude, let me just state something that's very important. Uh, if you want to make it through what's coming, you need some supernatural protection. Um, you know, you say, well, I'm, don't worry, I'm a big believer in uh, personal armaments, we'll say. And uh, I can seal carry, I have this, I have that, I'm trained as a such and such, that isn't going to do it. Um, well, you don't understand, I've, I'm, uh, name it. Whatever thing, whatever thing that man can come up with that, um, you know, would keep you safe normally. 
well, you know, I have my money in precious metals. I have my money in Bitcoin. I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. I can make it. You're not going to make it. There were probably some very financially well-off people at the, down in Maui that were burned. There are probably some very financially well-off people that are at this Burning Man thing that will perish. And uh, it's just getting started. And what's going to happen is you're going to see more and more of these people, these different groups, being absolutely decimated. That's what's coming. And uh, you say, well, I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a proud heathen. My God is Thor. Thor, the God of Thunder. Thor will protect me. We'll see about that. We'll see about it. I won't worship some sheep herders god of the of the east and whatever. Oh, we'll see. We'll see how your little god Thor does. Well, my god is Odin. He's he's even the most powerful. The gods kind of sort of, but you know, is he physically there? Does he care about you? You know. Oh, well, he he uh, died on a tree so he could have, you know, greater wisdom. Okay. Did he die for your sins? Did he die to protect you? Does he offer you any kind of way to offer up prayers to him where he can come to your aid and preserve your life? Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Allah, Allah is my God and, and Muhammad is his prophet. And he was the greatest of the prophets. Jesus was just kind of lesser prophet. He's not really God manifest in the flesh, even though the Bible teaches that. Um, completely taught from the New Testament. And I can even prove from the Old Testament, if you understand the Godhead doctrine, which most people don't, um, you know, is uh, Allah going to be there for you? Did Muhammad die for your sins? Will Muhammad come and protect you? Doubtful, very doubtful. Uh, you say, well, not me. I'm a, I'm a Zen Buddhist. Uh, Buddha, you know, he will be there. He helps me to attain to higher levels of thinking. And so I will be able to meditate and go into a very strong, deep trance. He's a false idol. And uh, Buddha's not going to be there to help you. Uh, well, Krishna or all these other different things. And by the way, you say, well, I'm safe. I'm a Roman Catholic. Oh, uh, well, you ought to read what the Jesuits think about heretics and liberals. If you're not a very good Catholic, if you're not some kind of a radical fanatic Catholic, uh, they also have it in for you. So um, Catholic, the Catholic Church is more than willing to slaughter off its own people. Uh, if they want to get some political agenda through, they'll shut down their churches. They will uh, cause you to take things, if you know what I mean, like the past three years. And they'll contradict their doctrinal stands. Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean anything. So, um, it's very important to make sure that you have the right God. Extremely important. But I think going forward, we're going to see the Lord starting to deal with these idols. And uh, in preparation for the time of Jacob's trouble, where only one religion will be allowed. And... Basically, it will be two, actually, if you want to get right down to it. Those that are in the Roman Catholic Church and those that oppose the Catholic Church that are put to death. Uh, that's what, Those two will be the only options. Uh, you aren't going to be able to just say, I mean, you know, the Antichrist shows up on the earth, empowered by Satan, uh, a supernatural being walking around, and he gets, you know, uh, wounded in the eye, and his eye is darkened and the whole thing you know the bible talks about that and uh he comes back to life and they're going to say and the whole world worships the you know the beast but they'll say oh we're okay with you if you want to be something else no they won't no they won't so um certainly the total fulfillment of zechariah 13 verse 2 will be in when the lord jesus christ comes back that's when he cuts off the names of the idols permanently um, sure, absolutely. But I maintain that it is actually going to happen before that second coming of Jesus Christ. As we head towards the time of Jacob's trouble, we're going to start to see a lot of these idols and these false gods being cut off. 
And I think that's what's happening right now. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of this before the year is over. Mark my words. Um, listen to what I'm saying. I do care about people. I can be crude and rude and abrasive and all the other stuff. But uh, listen to what I'm saying. Um, if a man sees a house on fire and the people are asleep, he doesn't stand outside with a soft voice and say, Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> he yells and he screams, Your house is on fire! Is anybody in there? Who all's in there? And tries to beat down their door to get in there to try to save them. Save them from being burned. At least if he cares, he'll do that. So I do care. I care about people. And if you're worshiping some false idol, which is actually in reality a devil, according to the scriptures, then I'm going to warn you. I'm going to tell you, you need to get away from that. So, um, we'll see. Keep an eye on things. Keep an eye on this Burning Man festival. If a lot of people die, then you know I'm right. You know that the Bible's right, that the idols are being cut off from the land and the unclean spirit is being purged out of the land. And then look for other cults like that. The devil wants to start taking people out. Well, you don't go after Christians. That'd be a dumb thing to do because you can't completely eliminate them. If this work or this counsel be of God, you cannot overthrow it. The New Testament talks about that. Gamaliel, the lost Jewish man, talks about that. You can't overthrow it. Because why? You'd be fighting against God if you tried. Um, so, <laughs> I'll leave it there for now. Let me know your thoughts. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, go check out our website, kjvm.org, King James Video Ministries. Um, thank you to all out there that support us. And uh, also let me know what you think about the new format of, I'll start out with a, showing a scripture from the Bible and then talk about it. So uh, that will be it. See you in the next video.